I want to welcome you all here to our Minority Concerns program, which is entitled The Life and Impact of John S. Rock. And I want to thank you very, very much for joining us here for this important program. Can you imagine a better place to have an event such as this in this gorgeous, restored, historic courthouse facility. It is, as many of you know, the oldest continuing uh, use courtroom in the state of New Jersey and the second oldest in the United States. About 150 people gathered at the old Salem courthouse to learn about John Stewart Rock, a native son of Salem County. Rock was born to free parents in Elsinboro Township in 1825. He went on to become an educator, dentist, physician, and ultimately a lawyer. As a doctor in Boston, he treated sick fugitive slaves and was one of the leading black abolitionists in New England. He was a prolific orator and is credited with coining the phrase, black is beautiful. The first question that's always asked of me is, how, how did I find out about John Rock? And I'll, real quick, how many of you knew of John Rock before today? That's not good. <laughs> Dr. J. Harlan Busby is an area historian. It was on February 1st, 1865, however, that Rock received the highest recognition of his career. On that day, following a motion by Senator Sumner, Rock became the first black man in history to be admitted to practice law before the United States Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. This was the highlight of his legal career and an unprecedented event sending chronicle reverberations throughout the national and international presses. The next day in Washington, the House of Representatives received him, and Rock was the first black lawyer to be introduced at a session of Congress. It would be the last triumph act of his triumphant act of his life overflowing with achievement. Dr. Christopher Brooks, an associate professor of history at East Stroudsburg University, explored Rock's legal career. He recounted how Rock and U.S. Senator Charles Sumner, also an abolitionist, exchanged 12 letters leading up to Rock's admittance to argue before the United States Supreme Court. Sumner expressed in those letters it was difficult, in light of the 1857 Dred Scott decision that affirmed slave owners' rights to take slaves to the new Western territories. Chief Justice Roger Taney wrote the majority opinion. Taney being an impediment to Rock's admittance to the U.S. Supreme Court bar at the time certainly frustrated Rock. According to Benjamin Quarles, the author, Rock wrote of Justice Taney to a friend that, I quote, the old man lives out of spite, end quote, and would logically never allow a man of African heritage to argue before the high court. Death is never something one should celebrate, at least that's my opinion. But the death of Justice Taney of Maryland in October 1864 opened the door to Rock being admitted. Making this admittance more likely was Taney's successor, Sam Portland Chase of New Hampshire. Chase was a champion of the abolitionist cause, thus Rock's desire to be admitted, well, the barrier had more or less been lifted. Rock died of tuberculosis at age 41 without ever trying a case. The audience was also treated to a panel discussion, which included retired New Jersey Supreme Court Justice John Wallace, Superior Court Judge Christine Allen Jackson, Cumberland County Prosecutor Jennifer Webb McCray, Municipal Prosecutor Demetra Katad Ruiz, and Attorney Chad Davis. They spoke of their personal experiences with diversity and inclusion in the legal profession. I have always felt in my life that from the things that you do, you start, you build confidence. And uh, uh, no matter what happens, uh, there, there are going to be roadblocks. But if you have the confidence to overcome them and you, you work hard at it, you generally do overcome uh, those roadblocks. It was a challenge after then because then I said, now wait a minute. I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I'm not going to let this uh, make me an example of, oh, see, she fainted. She can't handle it. So I never really wanted to let them see me sweat. I had to take a chance and rely on myself and believe that if I did this and I worked hard, I was gonna be able to support myself and my son because I never wanted to be in that situation where I could not do that. And every single time I've had a, a challenge, I draw back to that like initial experience 
of kind of being afraid with a little baby and being able to, to go out and, and do what I needed to do to support him. And it kind of gives me confidence in those challenges that I can, I can do it. When people see you, they don't assume you're an attorney. Um, so at my law practice, generally a client might come in and they say, I'm sorry, what do you do here? Ms. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew can attest to that too. She's also at her office. Uh, and, and so what do you have to do to overcome it? You have to be extra sharp. I mean, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, you really have to uh, come across professionally to every client um, to let them know that you know what you're talking about. But with the age of technology and, and social media, you can send a text. Um, it doesn't always have to be the face-to-face. -face. So consider that when, when you contemplate, like if you have the time. Like, because you do, if you can just sit there and send a text. And I am so grateful for the woman friend that's sitting to my right that is a true mentor to me. Um, Judge Allen Jackson, uh, uh, Jennifer is, is the one that fell in potholes, so I didn't have to. And she, <laughs> she, is, now, a lot and of she them. is now telling me, like, you know, that's a pothole, so go to the left. <laughs> <laughs> or go to the right. So, so thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, I can recall uh, both uh, my parents were, were mentors directly. Uh, Indirectly, there were many judges that I interacted with who uh, would give you suggestions, would talk to you about issues, and not necessarily a, a case that you were dealing with, but uh, things that would help you in, in your daily life. Uh, I have tried to uh, uh, turn that around and, and help others. I do a great deal of, uh, of coaching. I mean, we have struggles, but when you hear about somebody like uh, John Rock who was admitted to the bar, but it took 50 more years for an African American to actually argue a case before the bar. Um, you know that we have it very easy in comparison to them. 